Okay, so I went into the settings and wanted to uh, adjust. I went into the settings and I adjusted the default control of the volume buttons over here. And I, I changed it to, to Ringer um, instead of controlling the, the media volume. But as you can see, even when going down, it still it still goes down to vibrate. So you come up, there's there's sound for the ringer. Come come down, it's now vibrate. And if you look closely, there's a brief second where it you can see the little icon for it to be silent, but that's obviously not the case. It's still on vibrate. And if you go up there and tap the little options, you see that it's on vibrate, not silent. So in my opinion, that was a regression. I'm sure somebody complained at some point. And who knows, maybe there's different skins that would allow, you know, different different default methods or, or, or default behaviors for the volume keys, depending on the, on the phone. But I do remember some time back, Android 8, 9, 10 or something, when I, I there, there was, I guess, notable mention of, hey, this no longer does that in terms of being able to just turn the volume down like that all the way to do not disturb. And... Obviously, you might not want do not disturb. You might just want silent or whatever. But the, the the premise is the same because even if I put this on mute, which is over here, in order to get rid of that vibration, I have to go into the settings. So it's noise, 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 vibration. If I turn it to the if I turn the switch, but if I want no noise and no vibration. I'd have to go into the settings, not including do not disturb, which obviously you can now, you know, put that on or, or set that relatively easily. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm making this because I don't I don't really see what, what the big deal is about the switch anyway. I know some people might say it's an iconic thing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I believe OnePlus has a mute switch as well. I think they did away with it with one of their budget phones, but I just literally just watched the video for the OnePlus 11 Plus or Pro or whatever it's called. And, you know, it, it has the mute switch, which is a vertical switch instead of a horizontal switch, which I thought that was interesting. But when I think about things that these device manufacturers are implementing, you know, I'm not quite, this isn't a USB-C video or an iMessage video, but something like that. It, it, it leaving the the only reason that it's notable is because it's just been around for so long not in my opinion that it, it provided any real utilitary that would be greater than implementing that all through software and the the, the talk of this particular mute switch going away was kind of made known or, or given even more light because what you see in here on this phone are regular buttons and for the iPhone 15, it's rumored that those buttons are going to become capacitive buttons, meaning that they aren't real buttons and they won't move. So think about what happened with the home button on the iPhone 7. In fact, was, no, it was a 7, it wasn't the 6S, where it no longer moved. And it felt like a button because there was haptic feedback, but in terms of it physically moving, no longer was a thing. And... What's interesting about that is I don't see any real benefit to the consumer. One might say, well, with buttons and anything that moves, there's um, there's issues or concerns about longevity of life of that particular component. And as I say, this is an iPhone 6 and the buttons on this still work perfectly fine. So taking them away for a newer or in a newer product only leads me to think one thing. Somehow that's going to be another way for Apple to control their product. And I'm not against any company controlling the products that they make. But if we're now, uh, we've gone, you know, from the software experience and the cameras and the screens and the home buttons to now literally the volume buttons are things that are <laughs> are going to be serialized to the motherboard, which, again, they're not buttons, the, the capacitive or whatever you want to call them on the side. Uh they are going to be serialized to the the motherboard that if something goes wrong with them or if there's water damage or who knows what's going to happen, that's one more thing that could potentially stop working that you, the user, cannot replace. So the volume switch, in 
my opinion, as I started this video off with something that didn't need to be there ever. But, you know, especially over time, it's something they could have got rid of. But if they're replacing that volume switch with maybe an action button or and or the volume buttons with capacitive volume buttons. I don't. Yeah, just 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 be prepared for something else to be a part of the Apple repair program and something that you, the consumer, can't repair. I don't know how many people are repairing buttons on their phones. Uh, I can imagine if I went to eBay right now, I would see that I could buy some new ones. <laughs> but it, it just makes me laugh when I think about that type of control. That, oh, crap. All right, what else can we do to squeeze more money out of consumers somehow? Because they'll find a way to do it. And how? what's another way that we can implement even more control over our bread and butter product? So we got the cameras locked down. We got the screen locked down. Uh, the home button for the phones that still have home buttons are locked down. We got the lightning port locked down. We're probably going to attempt to lock down the USB-C port because the lightning port's already locked down. We got the battery locked down. I don't know what else is there for them to, to, to control. Uh, I don't know if the haptic engine is locked down. I mean, there's a possibility that that's locked down. I had to replace one, but this I, it was in an iPhone 6 actually many years ago. So who knows if they've locked down the, the, the haptic engine. But it looks like the last thing that they could have locked down or, or could lock down are the buttons. And they're going to do that. Um, interestingly enough, as I'm thinking about things that they've locked down, on the, I don't know if they're, they're not CAD files, but I guess the renders of what people are showing of the iPhone 15. There is a SIM card tray, so that's interesting to see. Will they bring that back in the United States? I don't know. But yeah, I, I, I know that a lot of the, the, the rendered images of the iPhone 15 show the capacitive buttons on the side with no mute switch, but right beneath it, there appears to be a, a, a SIM card tray. So. Is that coming to the iPhone or coming back to the iPhone in the United States? We'll find out. So uh, normally, you know, these are just rants, which they, most of them are. But this, yeah, I really am curious. If you've made it this far, what are your thoughts on the the, the mute switch on the iPhone? Is it something that, that you use? Um, is it something that, that you value? Do, do you prefer a hardware solution to volume controls, you know? Or, or software solutions. I think that we need the physical hardware so actual buttons, you know, make sense. But those buttons should be able to control the software where Apple has hardware that's unnecessary in my opinion that controls the software, but this little guy isn't necessary. These two buttons should be able to control the volume to go all the way down. I mean, volume up, volume down. You should be able to turn it down. If you have a remote uh, for your television, you can turn it all the way down with the remote or the, the buttons on the TV. You can, you can silence it. You don't have to, uh, pull in another component to, to silence whatever it is that, that you're listening to. So, um, what are your thoughts? Do you value the mute switch on the iPhone or any phone? Or would you prefer just a pure software implementation? Also, do you care that the iPhone 15 looks like it's going to have capacitive buttons? Uh, is that a concern? As a non-iPhone user, I'm not concerned, but I know that that's what they're going to do. And the only, <clears throat> excuse me, I know I was I was attempting to stop talking, but when I think about the other products that um, are capacitive in nature, well, I don't want to say capacitive, that are uh, not, I guess, movable objects, the trackpad on the MacBook is a great product. That that thing is great. And it makes sense, you know. I mean, if you can simulate all that without something that needs to move, like it, it's 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 a good thing. But there are still buttons. Like of course, you know, like it would suck if the keyboard became a capacitive keyboard. Somehow like, I don't even know how that works. So I think it's time for me to stop talking. <laughs> but yeah, what are your thoughts if you made it this far? 